Thank you for agreeing to this interview as part of my history class at Sacramento City College. As part of this class, we are acting as working, his, working historians by doing this interview. Our goal is to create a record of the COVID era because we know this will be seen as a historic moment in the future. So I have a few questions for you. Are you ready? Yes. All right, let's begin. Uh, question one. How did going through COVID change your routine on a daily basis? I think the thing that changed most was just making sure everything is sanitary, um, like washing hands more, cleaning carts more at the store, um, and thinking about how many other people have touched things that I'm about to touch. And so it's just made me a lot more conscious of that. Okay. Um... Did you make any changes to your goals while going through COVID? Not really. I think that my goals just got put on hold just because we spent so much time at home and there wasn't really much to do, but not really any changes per se. Okay. So did your crew or people you spend time with in person or through media, um, did that change because of COVID? Yes, we spent more time actually with our neighbors than our other friends and people that were further away because especially at first when we were just stuck at home, we were at home all the time. So our neighbors were obviously right there too. So we got definitely got closer to our neighbors. Okay. Um, did COVID change the way you connect with your friends and family? Um, and, and the people in the community? At the time, when it first started, I think we were doing a lot more FaceTiming and calling and that kind of stuff. I don't think now, though. I think it's kind of gone back to more in person now. Okay. Um, what role did social media and the news play in your experience during COVID? <sighs> I think social media was more just everybody has an opinion on everything. And so it just was kind of overwhelming and annoying to look at. Um, and, you know, at first it was fear or first it was skepticism, then fear. And then just everybody's bad opinions. And it just got really annoying to even go on social media to me. It was more like arguments versus real information. And what about the news? Did you believe the news or was there fake news or were you not sure? I think it's the same with any other news. It's always exaggerated. I don't think that it was necessarily wrong information. I think it's just super exaggerated and blown out of proportion, just like everything else, though. Okay. Um, how do you think going through COVID has shaped you as an individual? Like, so, for example how you were before March of 2020 and then how you are now, what, what really changed about you? Um, I think I'm probably more not afraid to like stay home. If somebody has the sniffles, especially having two kids. Um, if there's something that we are invited to and one of the kids is kind of sick, well, I'm much more open about saying hey, we're not feeling great or whatever. I think a lot of people are doing that though, that it's just, or like working from home when you're sick, it's it's a whole different thing because before people worked from home, or sorry, people worked in the office through their sicknesses, but now nobody wants that. So they want you to stay home. So I think that's kind of the biggest change. Okay. And then how did going through COVID change the way you think about the future? I don't know honestly I don't I don't think it really changed it might have there's not anything specific that I can think would of would you have done anything different like let's say this happens again in the future would you do anything different um uh yes I wouldn't hoard toilet paper <laughs> I think at first everybody was freaking out because you didn't know what was going on but now obviously we know that it wasn't like the zombie apocalypse where at first obviously that's where everybody's mind was we thought it was 
it could be the end of the world or something. And now I think if it happens again, I'll be a lot more um, laissez-faire about it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what was one of, or what was the toughest things for you during COVID? The toughest thing during COVID was probably being stuck in the house with a six month old and a two year old mm -hmm. because they are at a stage in life where they need that social interaction and they were kind of robbed of a lot of that. Okay. And then if you could relive the past two years, what would you do differently? I don't know that there's anything I would do differently. I, okay. I would just kind of go with the flow. I mean, what else can you do? Yeah, you just got to go with it. Okay. Um, and then I think that's it for my questions. So I just got to wrap it up. Um, thank you for sharing your thoughts and your time. I'm going to enter, uh, end this interview in just a moment. Uh, this project is for my history class. It is part of a collaboration with Stanford University and their Life in Quarantine Global Archive. If you approve, our interview will be housed online, so we would be, uh, we would be online content creators. Um, if you do not want this interview shared, it will only go to my professor, um, Holly Piscopo from Sacramento City College and a Stanford fellow this year. If you would like uh, to ask questions, I can give you her contact information, um, but are you comfortable with this being online? Yeah, I don't okay. care. Perfect. Um, so I just want to say thank you uh, for letting me ask you some questions and doing a, a video. That's it. Thank you.